Hello, and welcome to I Am Movies. Using their skills and driven by a common goal, they venture into a world filled with risks and uncertainties. Each member contributes their special abilities and experiences, forming an unusual team that becomes crucial for overcoming the challenging journey ahead. The movie begins in a desolate and icy landscape. A carriage arrives at a menacing prison. Stepping out of the carriage is a creature resembling an orc. Without delay, he is thrown into a cell with two other prisoners named Edgen Darvis and Holga Kilgore. The orc immediately tries to make advances toward Holga, but she swiftly puts him in his place by paralyzing him. The following day, Edgen and Holga are summoned before the Absolution Council in a desperate attempt to plead for a pardon. Edgen begins by recounting his tragic past as a member of the Harper's faction, a group of spies fighting against evil. He shares the heart-wrenching story of his wife, Zia, and their daughter, Kira, who were both victims of a brutal attack by Red Wizards. Left to raise Kira alone, Edgen turned to a life of thievery with Holga after leaving the Harpers. Despite their criminal activities, Holga became a caring mother figure to Kira, and they formed a makeshift family. Joined by Simon Almar and Forge Fitzwilliam, Edgen and Holga continued their life of crime. However, their lives took a dramatic turn when they encountered a wizard named Sophina. She convinced them to assist her in robbing Corin's keep, promising unimaginable wealth. Edgen initially refused, but when Forge revealed that the keep housed the Tablet of Reawakening, capable of resurrecting Zia, Edgen changed his mind. Their heist went bad when Sophina betrayed them, freezing Edgen and Holga in time. In a last-ditch effort to protect the Tablet, Edgen entrusted it to Forge and asked him to care for Kira. While Simon managed to escape, Edgen and Holga remained trapped. As Edgen concludes his tale before the Absolution Council, they receive a visit from Jonathan, a bird-like creature and council member. With Jonathan's assistance, they break out and escape the prison, despite having already been granted a pardon. Now free, Edgen and Holga embark on a quest to find Forge and the Tablet. Their search leads them to discover that Forge has become the Lord of Neverwinter. They locate him at a local pub aided by a flyer advertising his newfound status. Determined to retrieve the tablet and bring Zia back to life, Edgen and Holger realize that their journey is far from over. Arriving in Neverwinter, where preparations for the annual Heisen Games are underway, Edgen and Holger reunite with Kira. However, Kira is more thrilled to see Holga, whom she affectionately calls Bug, believing that Edgen abandoned her for selfish reasons. The trio meets with Forge, who has become the Lord of Neverwinter using the stolen riches from Corin's Keep. They also learn that Sophina is working as Forge's advisor. Edgen discovers that Forge has been deceiving Kira about the reasons for his arrest, concealing the truth about the Tablet of Reawakening. When Edgen and Holgup attempt to confront Forge, Sophina uses her magic to trap them. The guards are ordered to execute them, but Holga fights back allowing both her and Edgen to escape once again. Realizing they need a team to rescue Kira from Forge's castle, they set out to plan a heist. As the heist and games get closer, lords from different kingdoms choose to bring their wealth to Forge's vault, where the tablet is kept. Edgen and Holga decide to use these riches to hire a team for their mission. They seek out Simon, who entertains crowds with magic tricks. Simon provides a diversion while secretly stealing gold and trinkets from the audience. Pursued by the enraged crowd, Simon narrowly escapes until he encounters Edgen and Holga, and they share their plan with him. Simon agrees to join their cause, emphasizing the heavy security in Forge's castle. He reveals that he knows someone who can help. The trio sets out to find Doric, a young druid whom Simon had pursued romantically but was rejected. They witness a horrific execution attempt where Doric, disguised as a horse, saves a young woman and defeats their captors in her powerful owl bear form. Approaching Doric, they learn of her distrust towards humans due to being abandoned by her human family. Doric shares her reasons for wanting to take down Forge, as he imprisoned and killed her fellow druids for questioning his rule. She agrees to fight alongside them, driven by her desire to protect her people. Meanwhile, in her quarters, Sophina confers with her master, the Lich Shas Tam. He entrusts her with her ultimate plan, which she intends to accomplish by using Forge. Sophina then joins Forge as he meets with other lords to discuss the Heisen games. Doric, disguised as a fly, spies on their meeting, but is detected by Sophina. Evading Forge's guards, 
she returns to the team to share her findings. Doric reveals that Forge's vault is protected by the arcane seal of Morden Kanan, a formidable barrier. Simon believes he lacks the strength to break through unless he possesses the Helmet of Disjunction, a long-lost artifact. However, there is a glimmer of hope as Holgo reveals that her people, who fought against the Cult of the Dragon, might have information about the whereabouts of the Helmet. Unfortunately, her people are all long dead. The group takes a brief detour to Holgo's ex-husband Marloman's house, where she retrieves some of her items. Despite their differences, Marloman wishes Holgo well. Their journey leads them to a graveyard filled with the bodies of warriors who fought in the Evermores. With Simon's magical abilities, they can temporarily animate the corpses and ask them up to five questions each. They navigate through multiple bodies to trace the path of the Helmet of Disjunction, which was passed from one warrior to another. The last corpse they interrogate reveals that the Helmet ended up with a Thean named St. Gender, who promised to safeguard it. Ejin harbors distrust toward Thaeans due to their involvement in Zia's death. However, Simon and Doric have heard stories of Senk's heroic deeds as a paladin, and even Holga confirms the truth behind those tales. The group witnesses Senk's bravery firsthand when he saves a tiger child from a sea creature's clutches. They meet with Senk and request his assistance in taking down Forge. Senk gathers everyone together and tells them the history of the Red Wizards, explaining that Shastan, their leader, plan to raise an undead army by enslaving the land's inhabitants. Senk ponders why Forge would collaborate with the Red Wizards, and ultimately agrees to join the team only if Edgen promises to distribute Forge's wealth among the people of Neverwinter. During their journey toward the Helmet, Senk shares his first-hand experiences of witnessing the corrupting power of Shas Tam, which turned good people into slaves of evil. This led Senk to abandon the path of the Red Wizards and use his skills for noble purposes. Senk bears a mark on his forehead as a testament to his escape from the Red Wizard's control. Descending into an underground city called the Orifice, guided by Senk, the group encounters a chasm. Sadly, Simon unintentionally sets off a mechanism that makes the bridge fall. Thankfully, Holga unknowingly possesses a powerful artifact called the Hither Thither Staff, initially mistaken for an ordinary staff. Simon discovers its true nature a staff capable of opening portals. Using the staff, they safely traverse the chasm. Upon reaching the location of the helmet, they find themselves confronted by Thaeans. Sek engages in combat, but since the Thaeans are undead, they are difficult to defeat. As they flee from the relentless Thaeans, they encounter Themberchad, an enormous dragon with a voracious appetite. Themberchad devours the pursuing Thaeans and sets its sights on the heroes. Ejin faces imminent danger, but Senk manages to stab the dragon in the head, though without slaying it. The heroes find themselves trapped in a cavern rapidly being flooded with water. Ejin devises a plan, urging Holbet to provoke Themberchad, while Simon employs a spell to create an opening in the cavern, allowing them to swim to the surface. They emerge safely onto the shore, where Senk finally bids them farewell, returning to his home. Simon makes multiple attempts to attune himself to the helmet leading to encounters with his ancestor, Elminster Omar. Elminster doubts Simon's abilities and denies him attunement. Despite hours of trying, Simon's repeated rejections lower the team's morale. Simon and Dork contemplate leaving, but Edgen uplifts their spirits. In a moment of vulnerability, Edgen confesses that Zia's death was his fault, as he stole gold from the Red Wizards, making them come after him. Inspired by Holba's encouragement, the team devises a new plan to infiltrate Forge's vault using the Hither Thither staff. They manage to enter the vault by utilizing a portrait as a portal, coinciding with the arrival of Forge's treasure-laden carriage in Neverwinter for the Heisen Games. However, the portal's entrance is blocked when the portrait falls to the ground. Edgen encourages them to proceed, relying on improvisation. Simon creates an illusion of Edgen playing a song to distract the guards, but the plan later fails when Simon's foot becomes trapped. Inside the vault, Holga confronts more guards while Simon makes another attempt to attune with the helmet. Ominster confronts him once again, intending to reject him, but Simon defiantly punches Ominster, <clears throat> enabling him to establish a connection with the helmet. Empowered by newfound magical abilities, Simon aids in the fight against the guards. Simon and Holga eventually locate the vault, only to discover it empty, 
indicating that Forge has relocated his riches elsewhere. Before they can react, the team, including Doric, is captured. Edgen falls for a trick orchestrated by Sofina, disguising herself as Kira. When Forge arrives, he intends to imprison them, but Edgen proposes that they be allowed to participate in the games. Sofina agrees, seeing it as an opportunity for them to meet their demise. Placed in the Colosseum, Doric shares with the team her observation of guards transporting the riches onto a boat. It becomes apparent that Forge plans to steal the wealth of others attending the games. As the event commences, the team, alongside other contestants, navigates a dangerous maze filled with wild creatures and traps, including the notorious Gelatinous Q. While other players encounter misfortune, Doric devises a plan to teleport herself and her friends out of the maze. The heroes successfully reach the dock, where they find both Forge's stolen riches and the treasures he intended to steal. As Forge brings Kira along, he manipulates her by suggesting that Edgen might run away again. However, Edgen explains himself, causing Forge to reveal his true nature by holding a knife to Kira's throat. In an unexpected turn of events, Holka throws a potato at Forge's face, forcing him to release Kira. She reunites with her father and his friends as they board the boat and take the stolen riches. Simon contributes by using a spell to create a wave of water that hits Forge to the ground. In the aftermath, Kira forgives Edgen, and they reconcile their differences. Just as they prepare to set sail, the heroes witness a foreboding dark cloud forming the sky, indicating that Sophina is putting her plan into motion. Her goal is to enslave all the attendees of the games, using a Thayan horn that Edgen and Holga were previously arrested for stealing. This is part of her scheme to bolster the Red Wizard army. The team heads back to Neverwinter to stop Sophina's evil plot. Although Sophina succeeds in capturing the members of the Neverwinter Council, the heroes return just in time. Simon uses the Hither Thither staff to create a portal from the boat to a hot air balloon, causing the stolen riches to spill out into the streets and causing the attendees to flee the Colosseum, foiling Sophina's plan. No, no, no. During the chaos, the Red Wizard captures the heroes and engages them in a fierce battle. Sophina summons a massive stone dragon to attack them while setting traps and resorting to trickery. Despite the odds, the team launches multiple counterattacks, eventually causing Sofina to use her time-freezing spell to halt their progress. Her overconfidence proves to be her downfall when it is revealed that Kira had used a medallion to turn invisible and placed a magic-suppressing cuff on Sofina. Simon counters her spell, allowing Doric to transform into his owl bear form and beat Sofina before hurling her into a crumbling wall, which ultimately crushes her. The team initially rejoices in their hard-fought victory, but their celebration is cut short when they discover that Holga, who played a motherly role to Kira, has sustained fatal injuries and passed away. Kira mourns the loss of Holga, and in a heartfelt decision, Edgen decides to use the Tablet of Reawakening to bring her back to life. The group, along with the townspeople, celebrates the end of the games and the newfound sense of unity and family they have formed. Meanwhile, as events unfold, Forge makes a desperate attempt to flee, only to be intercepted and captured by Xank. With Sophina's defeat, Lord Neverember regains consciousness and expresses his gratitude to the heroes for their valiant efforts in saving Neverwinter. In recognition of their bravery, he bestows upon them medals as a symbol of honor. On the other hand, Forge, seeking redemption, attempts to plead for his forgiveness by recounting his tragic past to the Council. However, they show no interest or inclination to grant him clemency. Feeling cornered and desperate, Forge seeks out Jonathan in a final bid for escape. Unfortunately for Forge, the council foresaw his intentions and convenes the meeting in a room without windows, causing Forge's frustration to manifest in a collision with the wall. The tale of the heroes, their triumphs, losses, and the resilience of Neverwinter will live on in the hearts and minds of its people. And as the world continues to turn, they hold on to the hope that their actions have paved the way for a future filled with peace, prosperity, and the enduring spirit of courage that defines Neverwinter. And that's the end of this recap. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more. Thanks for watching and see you at the next one.